was tiny, she went, 19 years old, she went to a uh, program for six months to study sound engineering in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, I think. And uh, with, within a calendar year, she like studied for six months, like met a, met a guy who I don't know if she married him or their boyfriend or what, but met somebody in the program. And before the end of that year, they engineered the album of like the Hale song, I forget the name of it, Andre 3000 was the one guy, there's these two guys. They got it nine months after the first time she ever stepped into the sound studio and was shown, turn this knob this way, that way, that way. So, the point here, you know, good for you, good for you. And that's what Mudita really is, this sympathetic joy is good for you. But I mentioned, I sometimes mention too much my ne'er-do-well nephew, but I mean, I just mentioned the story to him one time, and I think he, he saw someone breaking into his, like, 57 Chevy, and initially he did the smart thing. He had a cell phone, 20 years ago, not that many of us had but he called the police. And then they're, they're scratching up the car, trying to get the door open, and he goes over and tries to stop him, and they shoot him dead. And so the next day, I'm on the freeway, I'm crossing the Bay Bridge, and I go by this guy with, like, uh, like a 52 Dodge truck or something, you know? And I first look at it, and I have kind of a scowl on my face, because I'm thinking, you have there another five minutes, you take it into the body shop, they'll fix it for you, maybe it'll cost you a thousand dollars, but you're still alive, you know? And so I kind of have a scowl on my face looking at this classic truck, and the guy driving kind of looks at me like this, you know? And so then I switch gears, and I just point at the truck, and I say, nice truck, because it was a nice truck, right? But I've always remembered that, and so I make a point that unless the guy looks like he's a gangbanger or something, you know, unless he looks like he's being hostile, when I pass people in these cars, I do that. I say, nice truck, nice car. And I'm sincere. I really do think it's nice, but I don't need to have it, you know. And this is really best for since that he got quite offended. His sensibilities were offended one time. He'd been studying with Yogan Senzaki for 15 years, and he'd been working on Kwan Mu for 12 years or something like that. And one night in their study group, their meditation group, this young college student comes in and he sits, doesn't even have any trouble sitting, he's young. These old Buddhist guys notice that, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of this story about it. You know. But first of all, he sits, just, he can sit perfectly, no problem. And then they do the interview, Dokusan. And uh, after the Dokusan, each person goes in and talks to the Rinzai Zen teacher privately. And then, then they just sit around have tea, and as they're sitting around having tea, Yoga and Senzaki Roshi says, our, our guest today uh, um, solved the whole work. What is it? And uh, then after this, after this uh, he said, say, and says, well, gee, that was pretty lucky, wasn't it? First time meditating, you solved the whole work. He's been working on it 12, 15 years and can't get it. And Senzaki Sensei says to him, I don't know if it was lucky or not, but he did answer the call and move on. And then um, Aiken Roshi writing now, then writing like 30, 35 years later, 40 years later, says, you know, I think I understand what's going on.